Well, as you probably saw last week, we are back from Nashville and I can tell you what a fantastic city. It's full of creatives and delicious food. But we went for one thing, the Nashville hot chicken, and today I'm gonna to run you through everything I learned and we're gonna make some hot chicken. Let's get stuck in. So by far the most popular is actually the tenders there. Now I'm not a huge fan of tenders, but we are gonna make some today. I like the whole or the half bird. So we're gonna start with that. We'll break this bird down. We'll get the marination going, and then we'll get some tendies out. Get your bird, get a nice one. I take the wing tips off. Some good kitchen shears will go right through them. You can just use a knife. And then we're basically just gonna cut this backbone out. Well, what you wanna make sure you do is that you keep this little nugget of gold in here. This here is called the oyster. So I think the best way to keep that, just cut around that before you cut in there with your scissors. And then just run your scissors up the backbone around that piece of meat, and then back in. Same on the other side. And there is our backbone and neck out. So from here, we're just gonna split this in half. So you want like a big cook's blade, and you're gonna go basically right in the center, cut down the middle, and straight through. Now you will have basically what they call the sternum there, which I like to take out but you can kind of leave it in if you need to. So from here, you can fry this like this, but I find it's easier to manage if you break it into two pieces now. It's easier to marinate, all those good things. So we've got the leg here, the breast and the wing. We're gonna keep the breast and the wing on and the leg on together. If you feel down in this section here, basically feel where there's the least amount of flesh and just cut straight through. So I think Cooking chicken on the bone is always superior. Also means you've got to work for a little bit for your food, uh, but I think the bone kind of adds the flavor. So there you go, simple as that. That's how you break down a chicken into four pieces for frying. We're gonna make a marinade and then we'll get it in. We'll leave it overnight. We'll come back tomorrow and we'll start frying some bird. So we're gonna season our chicken every way through this process. And I think that's what's really important to get that depth of flavor. So starting with our marinade, we've got buttermilk, the acidity level in the buttermilk helps the chicken to, to tenderize a little bit. And then we've got hot sauce, vinegar based hot sauce like Tabasco, couple of eggs, some garlic powder, salt and pepper. The next stage is the flour dredge that we're gonna to use to coat the chicken after we marinate it for 24 hours. And lastly, the most important arguably, is the dredge that we base this chicken in once it comes out of the fryer. One of the things that I learned, often the, the oil that they use is the oil that they fry the chicken in. The guys at Party Fowl, they use bacon fat. Now bacon fat's not super easy to get, but I have got some lard, so we're gonna use lard instead. Now if you don't eat pork for any reason, not a problem, try and get some beef tallow instead. And if all else fails, you can just use the oil that you fry in. And then we have sweet paprika, brown sugar, garlic powder, black pepper, and a metric ton of cayenne pepper. <laughs> also at this point, if you like it really crazy spicy, go find yourself some habanero extract or one of those kind of, you know, crazy sauces that's just bonkers hot and put that in there. But for me, this level is spicy enough. Anyway, let's get this marinade happening. So real simple, big bowl, your buttermilk, hot sauce, and it doesn't need to be super spicy at this point. We're just trying to start putting a bit of flavor in there. Our spices, a couple of eggs, and finally, just a little bit of water. Give that a little whisk together. And that's our buttermilk marinade done. It's time to get our chicken in. So, our chicken that we broke down and our tenders. They can all go in the same marinade. Make sure they're completely covered. I'm gonna cover this, chuck it in the fridge, and leave it for at least three hours, preferably overnight. You're gonna get a much better penetration of that seasoning. So we'll come back tomorrow, and we will start frying some chicken. So every November, I get around a charity called Movember, where we grow dirty mustaches and raise money for men's mental health and other men's health in general. So this year, uh, when you're watching this, the month's almost over, but there's still a few more days to donate. Go click the link below and donate whatever you can, big or small, it all helps and counts. And I'm gonna draw five people from anyone who's donated to win a signed copy of my cookbook, along with a Andy Cook's prototype dough cutter. So Movember, it's a fantastic cause that I get around every year. If you can, and I'd love for you to go donate in the link down below and get your chance to win one of the Andy Cook's cookbooks and a dough cutter. Peace. It's a new day, it's... <laughs> All right, the next day, I have some oil. Uh, we'll talk more about oil and temperature, but it's just heating up. I'm getting it to about 140 or 280 Fahrenheit at the moment. 
We've got a tray for our dredge. To this tray, we're gonna add some flour. Kind of really use any flour you want. I like using bread flour. And then to that, we're gonna add our spices. So we've got paprika, garlic powder, black pepper, and salt. And just give that a mix. Okay, got me chicken from the fridge. What we're gonna do is we're gonna coat all this in the flour. Don't be afraid about getting a bit of that liquid in there. There's a technique where you put a bit of liquid in there before anyway, and that creates kind of lumpy bits. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna dust the stuff heavily, and then we're just gonna let it sit in the flour for 20 minutes before we fry it. And that's just to make sure that we really get it all nice and coated well. So what's gonna happen is all that moisture from that buttermilk marinade is effectively going to stick better and hydrate effectively. So while I'm doing this, I wanna talk about temperature and time. We're gonna cook these bigger pieces twice. We're gonna double fry them. Uh, and we're gonna start the cooking process at 140 Celsius, which is 280 Fahrenheit for 16 minutes roughly. We're basically looking to cook that through without getting too, too brown. After that, we'll take them out, let them rest. We'll turn the oil up to 165 Celsius, 325 Fahrenheit, and then we'll fry them again just to get that color. And that same temperature is what we're gonna fry uh, the tenders at from start to finish, because they're a lot lighter. Uh, they're definitely not gonna take anywhere near as long. All right, I'm gonna get the rest of this dredged, and then we'll get frying. So I've got some more of the same seasoned flour that we're gonna run the chicken through one more time right before we put it in the fryer. So like I was saying, our oil is set to 140 Celsius, which is, which is 280 Fahrenheit on the money. And take our pre-dredged chicken, one last dusting just to make sure all those, all that moisture's kind of soaked up. And then we're gonna cook it for 16 minutes. And in a pot this size, we're just gonna do two pieces at once. Otherwise, we're gonna overfill it and you risk oil going everywhere. The other thing I wanted to talk about quickly while this is frying is the oil that you use. Now, I like to use peanut oil, but you can use any kind of high temp oil. Uh, beef tallow would work really, really well. That'd be delicious. If you wanted to, you could use canola. I know there's a whole lot of negative press around canola oil and seed oils at the moment. Um, I like the way that peanut oil fries, fries personally. All right, our chicken's coming out. It's looking good. Still got a little bit you know, longer to go. So we're gonna pull this out. We're gonna turn our fryer oil up, 165 Celsius, which is 325 Fahrenheit. And while that's happening, we're gonna make the, uh, the spicy stuff. So we're gonna pot over a medium high heat. We're gonna add our lard or bacon fat or tallow, whatever you can get. If you can't get any of that stuff also, or you don't wanna spend the money, then just use your oil, your cooking oil. You wanna get that up to about 160 Celsius. So while that oil is heating up, you'll make sure you've got a heat proof container. Add all that cayenne pepper and all the rest of those spices. Give that a little mix. And then we're gonna bloom all this with the hot lard. Now the lard's up to temperature, and it goes. Be careful, very hot. So that's what you want to see. All that bubbling action. Give that a little mix. And that is the good stuff right there. So what I like to do is start with this. And then to that you can add, you know, straight up, like I actually quite like using cashmere chili powder. It's got a really good dark color and it's got a really good amount of heat. Um, so the cayenne's the traditional way to use it but you can kind of put into this whatever you want to kind of pull that heat up. Like I said, cashmere chili powder, or like Thai kind of dried bird's eye chilies, or even some of those crazy, you know, the Scotch bonnet like uh, extracts, the, the scoble level of that stuff through the roof. But that looking pretty spicy already. All right, it's time to fry our tenders. So our oil's up at 165 Celsius, and these won't take long. They'll probably take six or seven minutes. Once they're fried, we'll finish frying our half birds, and then we're good to go. Same as before, don't overcrowd your pan. Give them a lot, another dusting in that fresh oil. In they go. These tendies are pretty much good to go as soon as that they're golden and delicious on the outside. Pull those out. Now we're gonna second fry our first pieces. Still at that 165 Celsius. And then we'll cover them in the delicious hot stuff. And we're good to eat. Whoa, how good does that look? So make sure you'll see that the spice mix will always split. Make sure you give it a good mix or get some of that good solid stuff on there. Now I saw a lot of the restaurants would just basically dip the stuff in there, which kind of isn't as feasible in a restaurant, 
it's probably not feasible at home because you've got to make so much of it. But by all means, if you want to dip it, go for it. But I think a brush works just as well. Get it on there pretty liberally. Make sure you get it on all sides. And it's important this is still hot. If it's cold, it'll, it'll seize up. If you've made it a bit earlier and you don't be afraid to just kind of warm it through. It smells pretty good. All right, to serve. White bread or white death is our friend Timmy calls it. Chicken on top. And this was actually like the best part. I love this part, eating all the, the delicious bread once all the grease is kind of soaked into it. It's a half a chicken too. That's a pretty serious lunch. Bread and butter pickles. And there you go, Nashville hop. I think even Miss Andre would be proud of. This is one of my absolute favorite dishes and uh, I guess I should taste some. I always get nervous when I eat this stuff. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. It's so good. It's just the right level of spice. <laughs> and it's crunchy and the chicken's juicy and it takes me right back to Nashville. I absolutely love this stuff. All right, you can't eat this stuff every day. Fully get that. But cook it for your friends and family one Sunday or Saturday coming up and they will love you for it. The chips on the side, white bread, happy days. Thanks so much for watching. Like this video if you took anything from it. Subscribe if you're not. And if you're interested in a deep dive in my conversation with the OG Miss Andre, the queen of Nashville chicken, then go click this video here. The interview was one of my highlights of this year. We'll see you next week for another recipe. Peace.